Hello everyone, uh, this is Unit 8, which is entitled, What Can I Do Here? Uh, these slides have been prepared by me, Assistant Professor Dr. Renal Bahrani, and edited by Assistant Professor uh, Jinan Ahmed. In this chapter, you are going to learn some of the vocabularies that are concerned with activities, for instance. Here in the second slide, after the title slide, we have what? We have the following expressions, just like go sailing, visit an aquarium, go skydiving, visit a zoo, go bungee jumping, very, I mean, dangerous uh, sports, see dolphins and whales, doing a lot of uh, adrenaline ad adventure sports. These are also very, let's say, adventurous sports. Uh, kite surfing, quad biking, and river rafting. These are different, different, let's say, activities that can be done if you go uh, to a specific place. If you want to show interest, I mean, somebody sometimes uh, tell, tell you about something and you, as in a reaction to what he what he said, uh, you say something, uh, you show some, let's say, um, interest. You say, oh, 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 all right, oh, wow, okay, that sounds good, yeah, great. Okay, so all these expressions should be, I mean, should be said. When you say, use this expression, you, you have to show uh, excitement. You have to show that you are interested in something. Don't say, yeah, that sounds great, but your your sound, your your tone doesn't doesn't seem that you are really interested. So when you when you mention these expressions, when you use these expressions, you have to show excitement that you show that you are really interested in something. Okay. So if I ask you, show your interest. Uh, give me two different ways to show your interest. You can use one of these expressions. Okay. Now, if you want to express things that you want to do, here I just want you to pay attention to something. If I ask you to express, uh, to express your, let's say, uh, uh, your uh, that you want to do something, uh, if you want to do something, give me two different ways uh, to show that you want to do something. Here you have a three, a three expressions. For instance, I would like to do. I would like to do. This is the first. Second, I want to. Okay, and the third one, I like doing. For instance, I'm going to give you examples. I would like to go to the dentist. I would like to go to the, let's say, to the school. I want to go to the school. Okay, I like going to the school. I like, let's say, um, traveling abroad. Okay, so here we have, I would like to. After two, we have what? A base verb. I want to, want to. After two, there should be what? A verb, base verb. After I like, okay, here we have what? We have like followed by another verb. So the second verb should be what? Should be ing in the ing form. Now, guys, what is the difference between here? I, I mean, here are some examples. I already put uh, two examples. I don't like seeing my dentist, but I would like to see him. You might see there is a kind of in, uh, contradiction in this sentence, but there is nothing, okay? I'm going to explain for you in the following slide the difference between I would like to do something and I like doing something, okay? So I would like, I like boxing, but, but I would like to box, okay? This means what? What is the difference between these two? Usually, I like plus verb by ng sounds more natural. This is when you say I like traveling, I like studying, I like this. This expression sounds more natural, or it gives the the sense that someone enjoys practicing something. When you say, for instance, I uh, I like traveling, it means that you enjoy uh, traveling. Okay. But um, here in the second, let's say, expression, I would like to do. Sorry, here I should add would. Okay. I would like, sorry, I would like to, a plus a verb, means that you like to do something in a specific way or a situation or it is good to do it. For instance, when I say I don't like, I don't like, here we are, we are talking about the first one, I don't like visiting dentist. I don't like visiting dentist, which means I don't enjoy visiting dentist, but I would like to see or I would like to visit dentist, which means I have to do because it my hurt my my tooth hurts me. 
So, in the first one, you do not like to go because you do not enjoy dentists. You don't like clinics. You don't like doctors, okay? But you have to go because you need that thing. So, I don't like, I don't like going to dentists, but I would like to go, which means I, I want to go because my tooth hurts me but you do not enjoy it. So the first one is used for enjoyment. The second one uh, is used because uh, you need to do this, because it's logical, because it's preferable, because it's a, um, it's a good way. I mean, it is the best, let's say, solution to end uh, several problems, okay? Usually American use I would like to do in all cases. American usually try to show themselves that are different. Okay, uh, by by uh, having by having let's say their own rules, their own pronunciations. So uh, American prefer to use I would like to. Okay, in all in all cases there is no difference, but in UK no there is a difference. Okay. Okay. Now uh, getting around uh, here. If you go to a city, okay, uh, usually when you when you travel, we, we ask about a map because we want to see, uh, we want to know about the different places available in this in this place. So we say, do you have a map of the city or town or where where can I find a uh, city center? Where is the city center? Where can I find art gallery, museum, main shopping area, markets, railway stations? So these are two sta uh, I mean questions can be used, okay, to ask about certain things asking about information or I can use this one what is the best way of getting around the city what is the best way to to go to a museum or to the museum to the main shopping area where can I hire a car where can I uh, where can I let's say uh, find a, a nearby market whatever so here we have one okay two three four four different questions that can be asked okay can be used to ask about let's say certain places certain things available in a specific city okay events and activities if you want to let's say um uh, what are you interested if you want to ask about let's say uh, uh ask person about the thing the things that he is interested in so what are you interested in are there any let's say um, are you interested, for instance, in exhibitions, cultural events, sporting events? Are there any excursions, tours, day trips? These are um, belong to different types of trips. Or are there any? Or what? Can, what? What are you interested in? Um, are you interested in excursion, ex exhibitions, uh, cultural events, sporting events? Or maybe you, as a tourist, you might ask: Are there uh, nearby excursions, tours, uh, day trips? So these are also expressions that can be used if you want to develop your own conversation. Again, an event and activity. Is there a city tour? Could you tell us um, what's, uh, what's, what is on uh, at the cinema, theater, concert hall, opera house? Can I book tickets here? Do you have any brochures on local attractions? Okay, can you can you recommend some places I want to visit? See, here suppose you yourself that you are a tourist and you are asking these questions to a layman or to a specific man uh, there. Okay, so uh, these are the t the types of questions that you have to use when you want to ask about the places. Uh, the um, is there uh, if there are any let's say events or activities places to go if you want to enjoy yourself and enjoy uh, the place you travel to. In a slide nine, here, uh, these are points. If you want in the future, inshallah, if you want to work as, let's say, a tourist information send officer, a tourist information officer, if you want to work as an officer in a tourist information, then you have to be qualified. You have to be, to be characterized by the following. You have to enjoy working with people. You have to good. You have to have a good interpersonal communication and customer service. Uh, say good interpersonal communication and customer service skills. Uh, you should have what uh, good organizational skills. You know how to organize things for people. You want to know. Um, um, let's say uh, work on comfortable uh, you uh, you feel comfortable working with computers and uh, you have what you have good geographical knowledge i mean just like when you want to let's say work as a driver if you drive very well but you do not know about the places then you are a bad driver because you don't know the places you are you are going to consume much time uh, getting let's say a commuting let's say or uh, uh, getting lift 
people, people from one per, I mean, from one place to another. So if you want to work as an officer in a tourist information, you, you have to be qualified by the following characteristics. Okay, this is just an information, I mean, piece of information for you guys. Okay, now we have worked, we have certain uh, things that you have to know. Making a reservation. Look at this. Making a reservation. If you want to book a hotel, a room in a hotel, of course, we have different, let's say, questions. Hi. If you, of course, you are when when you book a when you book, let's say, a room, um, you might uh, you might hear when you make a reservation, you have to call the hotel, uh, the receptionist, and tell them that you want to reserve a room, or you can just start by asking them. For the price, for instance, you say, hi, how much uh, are your rooms? Here you are asking about the, the rates of your, what, your, your the different uh, rooms available in the hotel, in that hotel. Hi, what are your rates? You are take, talking about what, asking about the prices. Hello, how much is the room? You are talking about what, um, only uh, any room, and, and there is nothing specific. Uh, so here you say, our room, the, the, the receptionist, uh, answer is this our rooms start at seven seventy nine dollar for a basic room our rooms start at seventy nine dollars okay at uh, uh, for a standard room and uh, go up to three hundred okay dollars for let's say for a, uh, a suite okay now in the second slide here okay can I can I so uh, reserve a room after you check the prices and the types of rooms available in the hotel, then the second, let's say, a question will be want is, is, is that you want is that to ask about whether it's possible for you right now to reserve a room. Hi, I would like to reserve a room. Hello, can I can I reserve a couple of rooms? Okay. Usually after this question, the person who works in in um, the hotel, uh, the first the first, uh, first thing that uh, usually asks is the the date you want to that room and the duration. When you are going to come and how for how long you are uh, are you going to stay? I mean, for how long uh, you will stay in um, in that hotel? So uh, the receptionist usually ask about the date and duration. So what date do you want to check in? Which date, which date do you want to reserve? What date are you looking for? See the answer. I want a room for June 22nd, okay, to June 25th. I would like a room for the 19th of July. How long will be will, will you be staying uh, with us? See, how long will you be staying with us? This is what a question about duration. Look, uh, or you can say, when will you be uh, checking out? So if I ask about the checking out, I'm going to calculate because he already, let's say, gave me the day of his interest of coming. Then I'm going to ask him about his checkout to know about the duration. Or you can say, how many days would you like uh, the room for? See, we have different, different questions to ask about the date and duration. Here you can say, I'm going to stay for three days. I would like to reserve the room for four days. I'm going to, um, to need the room until July 23rd. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes uh, the next series of the questions, after making the, I mean, checking, uh, checking the room and uh, specifying the date and duration, uh, here we have other questions. Um, how many people uh, the receptionist might ask you whether you are alone or there are other people will accompany you so because sometimes uh, the hotel uh, charge uh, hotels i mean charge by number of rooms or number of adults and sometimes uh, some hotels charge by the number of rooms only i mean whether you are five person sitting in one uh, room it's considered one room but sometimes you say no uh, we consider the number of adults how many num how many people with you according to the people they are they are going to charge you so after after you specify the date and day okay they will ask you about how many people uh, are there how many rooms will you need because it seems that you are um, from this question i know if it is only one because I, I need only one because it's only me or is there um is this for only one room how many rooms would you like to reserve how many rooms should i reserve for you Okay, from all these questions, I mean, based on the answer, we will know, I mean, the receptions will know whether there, it is only one person or several persons. Now, I would like, um, 
Only, I will only need one room. I'm going to need two rooms. How many adults will be in, in your party? How many uh, total children will be with you? Uh, just two adults. A total of uh, four adults. I will be alone. A total of two adults and two children. Um, one adult and two children. So after after you specify the date and time, they will ask you about what, or he will ask the receptionist, ask about the number of people, and based on the question, you will answer. So here we have different questions and different ask, uh, sorry, answers at the same time. Okay. After they determine how many rooms and how many uh, total people, they will ask you, uh, what type of bed do you want? Would you like a single king size bed? or two double size beds in the room. Will a single king size bed okay, be okay? Uh, we only have a room with two double size beds. Will that be okay? Do you want a smoking room or non-smoking room? <clears throat> Sorry. Do you prefer a smoking or non-smoking room? Here the answers to such questions will be, well, I would like a smoking room. Can I have a non-smoking room? Either is fine. I mean, both both types are fine with me, okay? I don't have a preference. There is nothing specific, which means there is nothing specific in, in my mind. Okay, after this, uh, will we have to provide your, your your credit card number to reserve the room? Sometimes you wanna, they will ask you about the payment. Do you want to pay um, by, by cash or by card? Uh, can I get a credit card number? Can I have your credit card number? What's your credit card number? All these, I mean, he is talking about what uh, the payment because he needs now the card, the number um, written on the card to do the, uh, the payment. Uh, finally, they will repeat the information at the end of everything. Once they know that about your entrance, your checking out, the duration, the type of room, the, t the number of people, they will repeat, I mean, the receptionist will repeat the information for you. Okay, Mr. Lee, I have one smoking room reserved for July 2019th till July 22nd. The total comes to $256.78 after task. If you need to, to cancel, please call us 24 hours before July 19th. Can I, can I help you with anything else? Okay, so this is the last thing a receptionist do to tourists. The last thing is they have to add to uh, repeat the, the, the whole information to you to make sure that everything is okay and correct. Okay. Now, uh, checking uh, checking in is pretty simple. You just need to go to the counter and, and say that you are, you are checking in. Hi, I'm checking in. Hi, I have a reservation. If you have a reservation in advance, say, hi, I have a reservation. I am checking in. If you are inside, let's say, the hotel, you, you have, let's say, certain questions. Where is the elevator? Do you have a concierge uh, service here? Concierge is uh, the man who is responsible for the parking, uh, for the cars, okay? Uh, do you have a map of the city? What type? Uh, what time should I check out by? What time is the checkout? Is checkout, etc. Certain question can be asked by the tourist when, when he just arrived uh, to the hotel. Uh, checking out is just as simple as well. I mean, when you check in, it's simple. And we have some, some uh, let's say, questions that you can use in order to check in. And when you check out also, we, uh, I mean, it's very uh, simple. Uh, so should we charge the credit card on file? This question is asked by the receptionist, uh, the one who works at the hotel. If you want to make sure to uh, whether to, I mean, to do the payment using uh, your credit card, or maybe you want to uh, pay by cash, should we charge a credit card on a file, or do you want to use a different card? Um, because here on file means what? Because once you entered, you gave uh, the receptionist a, uh, the number of a specific credit card. So he is just making sure whether you want to uh, pay using the same credit card that we already, I mean, put in your file or there is another uh, card, different card. Your credit card will be charged a total of, let's say, $256.78. Can, um, can you just sign at the bottom? or on the bottom. Thank you for staying with us. We look forward to seeing you again. This is a very important ex expression to be said at the end. Okay, once everything is done and you do the payment and made, made, made uh, sure that everything is okay, you have to greet and uh, wish, him, uh, wish him, let's say, a very, let's say, a nice day. We look forward to see you again so that you will just encourage him to come again.
Okay. If you need to, um, if you need, you are in, inside the hotel and you need a wake up call, uh, you can just, I mean, call the front desk, front desk, and you say, can I have a wake up call? What time would you like to uh, wake up? Uh, do you like your your wake up call at 7:30 a.m. please? Okay. Is there? What are the hours for room service? You may maybe you want to ask about the hours about the room service so that you will prepare yourself by going out or maybe um, you need to from that person who is responsible for the cleaning uh, area to be available at that time to ask him certain questions so here is another question okay they serve hot food from 5 30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, they also have a list of items you can select from during of hours uh, he's talking about the services there, the man who's going to clean, or uh, the person, or about the say, uh, timing for uh, uh, for serv uh, food services, okay, serving, etc. Sometimes you want to ask the the hotel receptionist uh, about whether there is a there is um, do you have a bellman here because here we have different terminologies for a bellman bellman who, who is the person who helps you with your luggage if you need the help to be uh, when you to carry your luggage or to go to your room and you don't know how to go there there is a, um, a man which is called the bellman we we also call uh, call him bellhop or bellboy but the commonest word is that we use bellman. Both the three of them are correct, but um, Bellman is more common, uh, is uh, the commonest, let's say, term. The person who uh, who is responsible for your car, sometimes you come with your car and you just leave it at the in front of the hotel and the person will just try to drive it and take it to the park. It's called the valid, valid. Okay, also this is a new term, so you have to know about this. The person who is responsible to, to show you our or tell you about the different uh, city activities, recreational places to dine, general questions, because it's called concierge, okay? Concierge, uh, this is a French term, concierge. So it's the person who is responsible to tell you pieces of information about the city, about the um, the places, uh, malls, all, all the things available in, the, uh, in, the, in that place or in that city that you went to. Okay, so here we have general. Do you have a concierge? Where is the valid attendant, the one who is responsible for a car parking and these things? Can you uh, get someone to get uh, my car to bring my car I mean, closer to the uh, to the gate of the hotel? So it's called the valid. Once everything is done, you have to what you have to thank that person. Of course, I put for you uh, dialogues. Yeah, I'm going to read only the first dialogue for you, the second and third, maybe fourth also, it will be uh, on you. So, TIC, okay, good, uh, good morning, Mrs. Can I help you? Yes, thanks, it's very kind of you. Are you a tourist? Okay, uh, yes, I am. I, can, I come from Holland. Um, here, it's supposed to be came. Uh, I came from Holland. My name is uh, Susti. Okay. Uh, my name is Indri. I am a tourist information center. So it, these, we have the expression uh, TIC, tourist information center. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? See, we use how do you do. If you feel, if you meet the person for the first time, you don't say how are you doing. No, say how do you do because this is the first meeting. The second meeting, you say what? Uh, how do you feel? What's up? How, how is life goes? Uh, how, how life goes with you, etc. How long have you been here? I have been here for five days. Okay. Are you going to stay for long? No, I'm just on a short uh, short holiday. I want to ask some information about uh, Benkulu. Uh, for example, places to eat, relax, beach, a museum, something like that. Okay, I will give you information about places to eat in Benkulu. There are many places to eat, such as Solaria. Uh, their uh, their food is very delicious. Wow. Okay. Very good. I will uh, I will go to Solaria then. Since this is a place, so I have to write it with capital letter. In Bangulu, there is uh, also a museum. Where is it? Okay. It is in uh, Pimbanguan Street, number twelve, uh, Padang, Harapan, 
uh, Bengolo. So you can you can write any address because I took the, that uh, dialogue copy paste. Could you help me to go to museum? Of course. So will you will you go to to beach in uh, Bengolo also? It's very interesting. I will be traveling in this uh, country. Mm, yeah, I would accompany you to go traveling in this country. In Bengolo, which is a beach that is very beautiful. Here, exactly in uh, exactly is um, Banjang, Banjang Beach, Zakat Beach, and uh, Basar uh, Buti is beautiful. Uh, I mean, uh, Bar and and Basar Buti is also beautiful. It's beautiful also. You can visit um, visit them all. Uh, wow, I think in Bungulu there are some beautiful tourist tourism places. Yes, in an area called uh, Kiba. Kiba Yang, uh, Bitang, uh, Suluma, Karor, all these places, of, uh, all, they are all beautiful tourism places, certainly. Bankulu is very beautiful, is a very beautiful country. Yes, I see. Uh, where, where are you staying? I'm staying in Santika Hotel. Uh, yes, that place is very nice. I hope you have a nice holiday here. Thank you, have to have a nice holiday. Okay, so this is what a conversation between uh, one of the tourists and uh, somebody uh, who, I mean, one of the laymen there. Here is another dialogue, and I'm not going to read this dialogue for you. You can just unread it. We have also um, a dialogue number three. Uh, we have dialogue four. So you can just, I mean, have a look at these dialogues. These are put for you. Here you have a question. Uh, where do you find this symbol? You can just look at this symbol. This is I, small I, which means information. Usually we find it where airport, city center, train station, hospital. If you get lost of you or if you have some inquiries and you want to ask a person about certain things, you have to go to the information desk. Information desk. So instead of writing information desk, they write only uh, the symbol I. From this symbol, you know that you have to uh, you have to go to uh, to that let's say desk and ask whatever questions you have in your mind. Uh, the acronym is TIC, abbreviations TIC means towards information center. Okay. Now we have, you have an ex exercise, develop a conversation between a tourist and an officer at the tourist information center and invest the following questions and statements. So when you write your own, it's a conversation between a tourist and, and a layman or somebody who works uh, in the, uh, at the airport or the hotel or a layman in the city, uh, try to use these expressions, tourist information center. Okay, uh, you can take uh, your lunch with you. What is what is the question so that the answer will be just like this? You have a tour every day. What is the question? I mean, the tour is asked so that the uh, the, the other person person, okay, or tourist information officer answers in in this way. We have a tour every day. I don't like heights. Who say this? I don't like usually tours. You say this, okay? I would like to go to horse riding. What did you decide to do? What do you, what do you like to go? Uh, for how many people? Can you give me uh, your full name? How do you spell your name there? Okay. How do you spell your name? Okay. And here we have. I just need your count, contact number, uh, telephone number as well. So here usually, I mean, uh, the tourist information officer asks the tourist about the following, let's say, the type of activity he prefers to do or practice or enjoy, uh, prefers to enjoy, a uh, number of people, whether he is alone or he is accompanied by other people, children, adults, we don't know, the name, discount, if there is any discount, especially sometimes we have discounts for students or sometimes for children, okay, uh, the price, uh, day and date, the information uh Tourist Information Center, usually, uh, this is a book and form, and usually uh, the um, Tourist Information uh, Officer uh, tries to elaborate or ask some questions regarding these points. And, um, of course, tour tourist will try to answer these questions to have his uh, booking form ready. Okay? If you have, any, say, any question, you can just visit these uh, refer I mean websites and references and consult them again. Thank you very much for your listening.